As a two meter tall guy, it's often hard to blend in with the crowd. But if I drink this potion made of French fish, which a German told me is a gift, I will blend in perfectly. This is called Poisson blending. <laughs> You can use Poisson blending to seamlessly insert any image into a new environment in real time. But why do you need Poisson blending? Can't you just paste in an image and call it a day? Let's switch to grayscale for a second. You see that the surrounding pixels are much darker than the pasted in image, which makes it stick out like a sore thumb. You need to match the intensity of the pasted image to its surroundings, while keeping its contents. But how do you do that? Let's assume you know everything. Then you also know that this is a demon. If you convolve the Laplace operator kernel with a demon, you get Laplace's demon. <laughs> Convolving just means placing the kernel over the image, multiplying the overlapping values, summing them, and writing the result into the center pixel. Even though you only see the edges, you still recognize the shape. Okay, enough with the edging. How does this information help us? Well, you can reconstruct an image from its Laplacian. Let's put the operator on the image and pay attention to where each color of the operator ends up when we reshape the image into a vector. We can build a matrix that when you multiply it with the image, you get its Laplacian. Now to reconstruct the image, you need to solve the Poisson equation. A times X equals B, where X is the reconstructed image, and A is the Laplace operator, and B is the Laplacian of the original image. If you multiply the pseudo inverse of A with B, you get back the original image. Or do you? If you look at the reconstruction error, you can see that it knows no boundaries. Why? Because there's actually many possible x that satisfy A times x equals B, but most aren't close to the original image. But if you introduce Dirichlet boundary conditions, or fix pixel values around the edge, the solution for X is much closer to the original image. Okay, cool. But what does all of this have to do with blending? I was getting to that. Let's pull a little switcheroo, and instead of reconstructing the image from the surrounding pixels of the demon, let's put it somewhere where it's not supposed to be. Let's use the pixels of Pierre Simon Laplace. As you can see, it blends really nicely. But I actually didn't use the pseudo inverse. CPU based solvers actually become unusually slow for large images. So how do you make it fast for large images? You can make it much faster by solving the Poisson equation on the GPU. We all know that GPUs go but GPUs can't directly invert huge matrices. Instead, we have to use iterative solvers like the Jacobi or Gauss-Seidel solver. These solvers work particularly well for matrices where each row's diagonal is larger than or equal to the sum of its off-diagonals. And what do you know? This is exactly the case for the Laplace operator. But before we parallelize these solvers on the GPU, let's try to understand them in their serial CPU form. You start with an initial guess for X. For now, let's pick zero to avoid confusion, but picking the target image might be a better choice. The Jacobi solver loops over each row, computes the sum of neighbors, ignores the diagonal, and computes X equals B minus the sum over the diagonal. This is kind of like saying, what if all other values were fixed? What would the solution of the variable associated with the row be? What's important is that the Jacobi solver doesn't update its guess for x in place, but instead it writes to a temporary buffer and then, once the entire iteration is complete, it copies the entire buffer into the guess x for the next iteration. The Gauss-Seidel solver, on the other hand, is kind of reckless. It updates x in place. This usually makes it converge faster. Let's try this with a 2x2 two two matrix step by step and look at how fast each method converges. The Jacobi method takes more steps and oscillates around the convergence target, while the Gauss-Seidel method takes fewer steps and seems to move more directly towards its target. But to see the real difference, let's look at a much bigger matrix, like 16x16. 16 16. And instead of plotting the path, which would be kind of hard to do with so many variables, we look at the residual. Here we see that Gauss-Seidel is much faster at converging compared to the Jacobi solver. But can you get even faster? And the answer is yes, with the successive over-relaxation method. Suck. With this method, you introduce an omega factor, and if you set it to 1, you get the Gauss-Seidel method, and with an omega between 0 and 1, you undershoot or take smaller, more accurate steps. With an omega between 1 and 2, you take larger steps, often converging faster. A good rule of thumb for setting omega is 2 over 1 plus the square root of 1 minus rho squared, where rho is the spectral radius of the Jacobi iteration. Or just try a bunch of omega values and see what works. We see that certain values for omega lead to faster convergence than standard Gauss-Seidel. 
But this actually took seconds to calculate. And who in their right mind has a couple of spare seconds for a measly 16 by 16 image? Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's stop being so serial and let's get serious. We need to use the GPU. Parallelizing the Jacobi solver is easy. Every pixel only depends on the last iteration's neighbors. The shader has three inputs. The background image, the source image, and a mask. The mask tells the shader where to blend. Inside the white region, we solve the Poisson equation. Outside, we keep the original background. We can also use the mask for additional feathering. Because the GPU is so fast, Shaders can do multiple passes per frame. The result of the previous pass is used as input for the next iteration. But we can only do so many passes per frame before the frames per second inevitably drop. In the same number of passes, gauss adel with successive over-relaxation, as we have seen, converges much quicker. Parallelizing the gauss adel solver is a bit trickier though. When you update all cells simultaneously, you might be writing to a cell that neighboring cells still need to access. To avoid this, we need to play checkers. On even passes, you update even parity pixels, and on odd passes, you update all odd parity pixels. This guarantees that no race conditions occur, because neighboring pixels always have opposite parity. Okay, we've discussed a lot. Laplacians, their Schley boundaries, the Poisson equation, the Jacobi solver, the Gauss-Seidel solver, successive over-relaxation, and how to do it all on the GPU. But only one question remains. Will it blend? That is the question. I've built a real-time Poisson blending project in Touch Designer. You can download the project and the GLSL files on my Patreon.